It is finally here. You haven't been in the big house since November of 2019, an entire season of nobody in the crowd, but Michigan should be at 110,000 plus on Saturday noon against Western Michigan. A tale of two teams that kind of had opposite seasons last year. Michigan 2-4, and four, Western 4-2, four and two, started off 4-0, and oh, lost their last two. There's the info of the game. It's on ESPN if you're not going to be in Michigan Stadium, but if, you, if you're going to watch at home, but if you're going to be in Michigan Stadium, go down in the comment section below. Type me. I want to kind of take a little bit of a pulse. How many of you are going to be in the stadium cheering on the Maize and Blue, singing the fight song, and being a part of the largest football crowd anywhere in America to watch a game this weekend? So go ahead and type me. We're going to go over five players to watch, some rumors on the offensive line, and a deep look into Cade McNamara and what we can expect as the new Michigan starting quarterback. It's the Michigan Football Report coming up right now. Game week, we've got three days until the game. And by the way, I almost choked somebody in the office today by bringing up what anniversary today is. So if you've seen that stuff on the internet, just, uh, you know, you authority to you as a Michigan fan. If anybody mentioned September 1st, 14 years ago, you have my permission to... Uh, to take uh, out vengeance on them as uh, as you see please uh, no uh, no uh, police or anything will be involved trust me so we're going to talk about what Michigan Western Michigan so many questions are going on with this program so many uncertainties coming into a season like really we've never seen maybe since Rich Rodriguez back in the 2008 uh, season Michigan is a 17 point favorite as you see on the screen it's a 67 point over under ironically when these teams played three years ago I think it was the over under was like 52 and Michigan was a 28 point favorite so you can kind of see how uh, you know things have changed in just three short years Michigan's D expected to give up a lot more points the offense certainly not not expected to put up as many but predict the score let me know what you guys think the score of this game will be go down in the comment section I will pin this below the video this uh, I'll ask you to predict the score pin it below the uh, the video go down reply to the pin if one of you guys and the first person who does so predicts the score right I'm gonna Venmo you 25 bucks but a couple rules here you gotta tell me which team's gonna win You've got to get the prediction in before kickoff. So don't come in here like a, like a you know smart aleck middle of the fourth quarter and try and predict and, and get 25 bucks. And you're not allowed to say, 25 bucks, Yoder, you're cheap. But what about 50? What about 100? Well, how about this? Two straight seasons, nobody has predicted the score straight. We've offered this almost every single game over two seasons. None of you have got the score right exactly. So uh, if we get a couple, maybe we'll up the ante. But we're playing for peanuts if nobody can get the score accurate. I'm getting it right almost every single week. And that is why I use, Bet, use BetUS, our presenting sponsor. They're back with us for a second season. Tons of you guys got involved with BetUS last year. I'm sure if you followed my bets, you're probably re-upping your uh, deposits. I, I didn't have a really good year last year, unlike 2019. But got the great sign-up bonus for you. Go to chatsports.com slash go blue. We make it really simple for you. It'll drop you onto the sign-up page at BetUS. Sign up, make your first deposit, use that promo code go blue, and you'll get a 125% deposit bonus. Quick math here if you struggle at math. Put 100 in, you get an extra 125. You put 200 in, extra 250. 300 in, it's the math there, Sam. $375 that you get as bonus cash. So go get going with them. Make some money. Bet on the Wolverines if you think they're going to win by more than 17. Bet on the Buckeyes. They're only a 14-point favorite or against them, Minnesota, tomorrow night. Let's take a look at the last five meetings between these two teams. Michigan, 7-0 and all-time against Western Michigan. Uh, these are really the only ones, these games here, that have been in the modern era. I think prior to that 2001 game, you got to go back to like the 40s or something like that. But they've played five times this century, Michigan winning 49-3 in Jim Harbaugh's fourth season in 2008. Uh, 2011, that's pretty hard. Hoax first season. 2009, Rich Rod. 02 and 2001, that of course is Lloyd Carr. So Michigan seven and O, and Jim Harbaugh will now be going into his seventh season as head coach. <laughs> Crazy how time flies with another quarterback. Quick recap for you if you haven't been paying attention. It's Iowa transfer uh, Jake Rudock, then Wilton Spate for a season and a half, and Brandon Peters and John O'Corn, that disastrous 2017 season, then transfer Shea Patterson for two seasons, then Joe Milton, who was a disaster, Cade McNamara took over at the end of the season, only started, it wasn't seem like this, if you look back, Michigan only played six games, he only started the season finale, the season finale against Penn State, which is really... You know, if, if Michigan played a bowl game, it would have been the fifth to last game of the year. Uh, as, you know, fate would have it, that was the last game Michigan played. Uh, got down really bad to Penn State. 
Uh, he actually, McNamara, got hurt early on, if you recall. was kind of diving to try and get some extra yards, make it to the end zone. Got hurt. Never played again that season. Joe Milton came back in. Uh, he didn't, uh, Joe Milton was in, he didn't uh, return to Michigan. He's the starting quarterback at Tennessee. So we don't really know what we know of, you know, what we're going to get of Cade McNamara outside of that second half against Rutgers. Threw a pretty ball. Uh, but I don't think there's a ton of pressure on Cade McNamara. I don't think he's the one that's under pressure here. I think there's more pressure on the coaches. I rolled through all those quarterbacks. If you think what this quarterback room looked like a year ago, you had Cade McNamara, Joe Milton, Dylan McCaffrey. McCaffrey didn't get the starting job. He didn't even want to stick around. He sat out the season when it didn't even hurt him to do so. He could have played, not lost the eligibility, chose to sit out. Now he's at Northern Colorado. Joe Milton transferred. If Milton you know, shows out, they're playing tomorrow night against Bowling Green, and Cade McNamara struggles, I think that is more on the coaching staff than it is on the players. It's showing that Michigan, Josh Gash, Jim Harbaugh, cannot develop quarterbacks. McNamara, limited appearances last year, had 425 yards passing, five touchdowns, also had a rushing touchdown. Some good things out of there, though. I mean, I think we all saw the more catchable, prettier ball that he threw over Joe, uh, Joe Milton. No interceptions and threw above, you know, completed his passes above 60%. I mean, that was good 20 years ago, but Michigan really has not had and needs to have a quarterback you know, completing 66, 67, up to 70% of their passes, which has become the standard for high caliber college quarterbacks. He's the starter. Freshman J.J. McCarthy, uh, five-star, top 25 player in the country coming in, was in spring ball. McNamara won the job, and it was really close, it seems, towards the end. I think as long as Michigan has a multiple-score lead, you will see some McCarthy in this game. I do not think we'll see Alan Bowman in this one. I don't think we'll see uh, Dan Villari either, the, uh, the fourth stringer out of Long Island, New York. So with McNamara, five touchdowns last year, uh, no interceptions, one rushing. Crazy to think about this. He only has, or he, he is only a freshman eligibility, third year in the program, redshirted in 19, 2020 didn't count against their eligibility. So he has four years of eligibility, same as J.J. McCarthy entering the season. But the question for you, make it simple, type O or type U. I'm going to put the number at 225 yards passing for McNamara against Western Michigan. I want you guys to go down in the comments. Just give me an O, give me a U. I'm going to tally it up. We'll, uh, we'll publish it out to the internet, uh, let you guys know what you guys think, or you can just, you know, hell, uh, track them yourself if you want to. Western Michigan, the number 78 pass defense in the country uh, last year, giving up 242 yards per game. One of the worst in the state, although Michigan exists with nine, number 96 passing defense in the country. So Western at 78 isn't that bad. So I'm going to go... I'm going to go over on this one, although, yeah, I'm going to change that. I'm going under. I'm going under. Uh, let me just put me down for a U on this one, but go down and answer below. And if you guys haven't yet, first time watching the show or if you've watched it again and first time didn't do it for you, go ahead and subscribe. It is YouTube.com slash Michigan TV. More Americans get their football news from the Michigan Football Report than any other nationality. That is a fact. And you can take that one to the bank. Now, let's take a look at my five players to watch in this game. Really the five biggest storylines, I think, for this Wolverines program. Zach Zintner started four games last year. Came in when Michigan had a rash of injuries coming out of that Michigan State game, Wisconsin game, et cetera, Jalen Mayfield, uh, and the whole lot. I've got him as my starter at right guard. He was projected to be the starting center, but... Him being flexible enough to move to the guard position, Andrew Vistardis returning for a sixth year, really gave Michigan the ability to uh, put their best five out in the field. But there is a persistent rumor over the past week or so that one of these five guys is not going to be in the lineup. My gut tells me it's either uh, Keegan or Vistardis, although Michigan has been very tight-lipped about it. If that happens, I could see Zach Zittner, if it's Vistardis, moving to center and then... Um, and uh, another player backup coming in and filling in the right guard role. So a lot of rumors out there. So if one of those five guys does not start, don't blame me and say I got it wrong. I think there may be an injury. Uh, you might see that shifted around if it's for starters, you know, if his inter moves over, et cetera. How about Chris Hinton? Borderline five-star, started as a five-star. You know, I think he ended up with like the 40th best player in the country in the 2019 class. He started as a sophomore, right, in 2020. Got a lot of action in 2019. I've got him in my starting lineup again. Him and his classmate, Mozzie Smith, from that 2019 recruiting class. They're there with Donovan Jeter returning uh, again. You see the backups there, Jess Spate, Julian Welchoff, and Rayshon Trap Money Benny as your backups. But this defense has got to get 
better play on the interior of this defense. And the way the 3-4 scheme is going to set up with Mike McDonald as the defensive coordinator is someone like Chase, or not Chase Winovich, someone like the third Bosa brother, Aiden Hutchinson. He is technically going to be a linebacker in a, lot of, in a lot of ways in this set, but Michigan will have five linemen and only really two linebackers. But these are the three interior guys that will be called defensive linemen. He's got to make plays this year. Chris Hinton has got to start playing like an all Big Ten level player or this Michigan football defense is going to struggle because those backups are just not ready for prime time at all. And with a change to 3-4, this is a very thin defensive line. Dalen Baldwin has been a big topic of this show for the last two or three months. The transfer over from what's the school? I'm forgetting. Jackson State, is that what it is? Jackson State, Deion Sanders. I actually think there's like a documentary out about their season last year. He played in the spring and was the newcomer of the year in that conference, second leading receiver in the conference. Can he be a difference maker? A lot of buzz. Him and Zach Zittner are getting all the buzz on the offense. Michigan's wide receiving uh, group has a lot of names you know, okay? We all know Mike Sainer still. We all know Cornelius Johnson. We all know Ronnie Bell, but they just haven't produced to the levels that you would expect from a team that recruits as high level as Michigan. So can this zero-star recruit four years ago who spent four years at two different schools in Division I AA, can he come in and be an instant difference maker for this team? I think the, uh, the proof will be in the pudding. We'll find out Saturday afternoon in the big house. I'm going to give you one more opportunity to predict the score. It's a $25 Venmo. No shenanigans. you got to take the score. you got to get in before kickoff. you got to tell me who is the winning team, and we'll know if you edit it. So if you edit it, automatically disqualified, and it's the first person to if three of you guys do it. It's the first one by the timestamp that we'll look up. We'll get the $25. My prediction I think Michigan's defense will play better than expected against a Western Michigan team uh, that is more built for offense, right? This is a more offensive-driven uh, program with Tim Lester as their head coach. I think the defense will play a little bit better, and the offense will struggle to be explosive. I think they'll end up relying on the running game a lot more than maybe you guys would expect going against a pass defense as porous as Western Michigan. The secondary, big focus, was the biggest, um, I think, X on the just like, a failure on this program last year. It had been a massive strength. 2016, 17, 18, they were number one pass defense, number two, number one, number two pass defense in the country three straight years. 2019 took a step back to like number 12 or something like that. And then 2020, folks, they were 90th something in the country, 96th in the country last year, 255 yards per game. I think they gave up over 300 yards four times, including Michigan State, which is absolutely preposterous. Vincent Gray, Gmon Green, uh, expected to potentially be your starters. I talked to you guys a couple days ago about Dax Hill potentially being in there at cornerback. Vincent Gray, all right? The secondary is experience, right? It's very experienced. You're bringing back both your safeties. You're bringing back three corners that got played last year. But this is an ex this is t uh, experienced secondary, but they are a bad secondary, right? You've got some names you know, but they played horribly last year. I saw an interesting quote, though, yesterday. Vincent Gray was a starter for a lot of the times last year, then ended up getting benched because of poor performance. He was asked if he was excited for the defensive coaching changes, or if he was excited. He says, yes, I did get excited. I did think it was going to be a really good change. I was ready for a change schematically. I feel this is going to prepare us more for the next level. It's going to allow us to compete and make plays on the ball, which is what, which is what I enjoy. So I'm excited for it. Maybe kind of a shot at Don Brown um, and the fact that he put under-experienced players on an island and forced them to uh, you know, go out and, and make plays. So that was a quote from uh, Vincent Gray yesterday. The, uh, the Western Michigan passing offense last year, 23rd in the country, 286.5 yards per game. Uh, now they had an NFL receiver on that offense that's now gone on to the NFL. But the quarterback's back, the running back's back as well to, uh, to support that passing game. And they were ninth in the country in scoring offense at 41.7 yards per game. My last one, we talked about at the top of the show, so I wouldn't spend a ton of time. It's Cade McNamara. It's what to watch for. If you're the starting quarterback for Michigan, if you beat out, if you're a borderline four-star and you beat out a five-star true freshman that people have already anointed and crowned as the, he's, he's Harbaugh's Andrew Luck, just like Brandon Peters was, just like, uh, you know, three other guys were. If you beat him out and you don't, you know, play strongly, are you going to have a short lease? If he starts out this game, let's just say, 6 of 14 for 97 yards and interception, do you bring Kate McNamara or do you bring J.J. McCarthy in the end of the second quarter or third quarter? I think that's the biggest question I have leading into this game is will they have a short leash on him if he struggles early in only his second start as a Michigan football quarterback? Before you guys go, one more time, don't miss this deal because I don't want you signing up for a sportsbook, getting some uh, you know, brutal 
sign up bonus. Go to chatsports.com slash go blue. Use that promo code go blue when you sign up, make your deposit. 125% deposit bonus. Keep uh, following me on Twitter. I'll keep putting out my bets on Saturday morning if you want to win or lose with me. Chatsports.com slash go blue. Promo code go blue. We'll be back with a couple more videos before the game on Saturday, talking some offense and defensive depth charts. Until then, go blue.